Right after a nearly 30-hour manhunt, a suspect in the New York City subway mass shooting has been arrested. And sources tell us that the 62-year-old alleged gunman called a tip line himself, which helped lead to his capture. He will face a judge in federal court today. He is charged with violating a law that prohibits terrorists and other violent attacks against a mass transportation system. Joining me now, retired NYPD officer Jillian Snyder and early start anchor and attorney at law, Laura Jarrett. Jillian, look. He called the tip line himself. What does that tell you? There's a lot of reasons he may have done that, honestly. Um, one that I was considering last night was maybe he felt like there would be vigilantism against him. Everyone in the city knew who he was at that point, 10 million eyes on him. Maybe he was scared for his own safety and figured he'd be safer in capture. So he was only in the East Village, I mean, which is still part of New York City, a short subway ride from where the crime took place. Why is it that you think... He didn't try to flee. That's a question people are asking. Because his photo was everywhere. This has made international news, honestly. Everyone in the, my brother-in-law called me from France to make sure we were okay at the night of. So honestly, this is all over the world. People know what happened. People recognize him. And I think he knew he couldn't get away. It sounds like you're saying that the way that law enforcement went about capturing him had a big impact in the way that this all ended. It did. They disseminated information in real time. As soon as they had credible, factual support, they put it out there to the public. They wanted them to be involved. They wanted them to be on the lookout. And I think the way the NYPD and the FBI handle this is outstanding. All right, Counselor, explain to me <laughs> the charges that he faces, because this is something we haven't really seen that much. Well, before. and it's interesting because you'll remember in the beginning, um, investigators said, we don't think this is terrorism. And I think a lot of people are confused by that because you think of terrorism as an intent to intimidate the public or the government. But a lot of people don't realize there is no standalone federal terrorism statute. You have to have some other connection. Now here, authorities have lucked up because he did this on a, a, on a train. He did this on mass transportation, which happens to be one of the ways that you get someone with a federal charge like this. And it's a significant charge. It carries life uh, in prison if he's actually convicted. And here he has left such a trail of evidence online through all of these rants and all of these YouTube videos and all of the planning that went into this, including all of the stuff that he actually left at the scene of the crime, um, it's it's going to be a mountain of evidence against him. What role do you think the videos will play? I think it, it goes to the intent aspect. There's, I think, a lot of questions about motive. It seems like sort of a, a lone wolf, you know, mentally ill situation as, as of right yeah. now. But he's talking about doing things on trains. He's talking about uh, there need to be more mass shootings. If you have some of it, maybe we can play it. But it's disturbing stuff. It's a lot of rants. It's a lot of racism. Um, but it, it provides a trail and a, a, a peek behind the curtain into his intent. That mental health thing you brought up, you know, colloquially known as an insanity defense, is that something that could go to that? He could try, but even, you know, with that, you don't just walk scot-free. You still have to go to an institution. It's still, there's a process that goes along with it, obviously. Um, we'll see if he tries to, to mount that. He has a history, obviously, mm -hmm. of criminality. He's never been charged with a felony before, which is why he was able to get the gun. Um, but he has a pretty lengthy criminal history. In the videos, again, Eric Adams, the mayor, told me yesterday he wished that social media companies had done more to monitor this kind of thing, to maybe prevent a shooting like this from happening because of the messages a guy like this was sending. How possible is that? It's so hard. There's so many people that put so many different things. And again, freedom of speech, people can kind of say what they want when they're on social media. Of course, we should be proactively looking for any threats. Um, and the FBI does that. The New York City Police Department does that. They will flag anything that's suspicious. Um, they will let the precinct um, know that there might be a threat imminent and then we'll get a level of what kind of threat it is, what we can do to maybe, you know, intervene. You're surprised this ended as quickly as it did? Yes. I'm very pleased, though. 30 hours is very impressive. Yeah, they did some amazing work there. All right. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Sure. Soon we're going to